What's going on everybody? C4, welcome back to the channel and today we're here for episode 5 of our Madden 22 Pink Slips Franchise Season 2 with our created Vancouver Grizzlies custom team. We're live on the PC ahead of what is going to be a great doubleheader. Great day to be great. Great day to win and get some big time players. We got the Bengals on the road, the Titans at home, two of the top teams in the AFC with an opportunity to end a two game losing streak get back in the win column, and win ourselves a hell of a football player. So we won week one. That's where we got that 1-0. Played the Houston Texans, one of the worst teams in Madden. Uh, kind of worked well in our favor, but that was just on default all pro. It's too easy. So last episode, episode four, we did a doubleheader. We knocked it up to the all C4 slider, so it's aka playable all Madden, and got smoked. We lost two games in a row. Got, you know... Come on, we gotta, we gotta get our asses in gear here. Gotta find a way to, to get some dubs. I don't know what game I wanna play. I do wanna do a little preview of both the Bengals and Titans roster just to see who has, like, out of these two teams, the most attainable players for us. What, you know, what teams out of the Bengals and the Titans have, like, the best 70, between, like, 67 and 73 overall players? Like, if, 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 especially just even identifying one guy that could be the one big time player that we want. Um, you know, and I would say, I, I want to be like, changes from the last episode, well, we lost! So, the only changes that we actually had from the last episode is that this year, there's a loser wheel. So, games that we lose, one player's overall goes down one point based off of a spin the wheel. It's nothing too, too crazy, and really, the only punishment is when it comes to upgrades, that player's just worth one less overall point, which is not a major punishment, but it's still a punishment within itself. Uh, and it's all random, you pretty much spin it. The only players that are safe from getting uh, deducted a point are our team captains. And I think in that episode, we lost one point on Alex Singleton. He went from a 70 overall down to a 69. And I feel like Cam Lake was the other one, was it? No, 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 that was a lie. First one was Zimmer. He's not playing yet. But Zimmer went from a 74 down to a 73 in that first loss. And then Alex Singleton went from a 70 down to a 69 in that second loss. So, you know, we don't want to lose any more games. We don't, we do not. And the only player we've been able to add to the squad this season uh, on the defensive side of the ball is this man right here, Justin Reed, team captain, 24 years old, 83, not any you know, morale. We got to get him feeling good. We got to get him happy about living in Canada, especially in Vancouver, beautiful city. Uh, but he's a start up. He's a big time playmaker for us, and I'm excited to see him continue to grow and develop. And of course, on the offensive side, we are also to add, able to add Max Sharping. From the Houston Texans, right guard, 68, only 25, was, you know, all-conference at Northern Illinois. And I really actually thought about kicking him out here to right tackle, but the O-line's so bad. I don't really think shuffling any of these guys around is going to uh, really help us too, too much here. The only thing that's going to help us dig us out of this hole is us. You know, we got to just find a way to win, find a way to stack some victories, add some big-time players. So we have Bengals. We have the Titans. Both those games will be very difficult to win. But let's take a look at their rosters really quickly. And again, look for that money range between like 67 and, you know, 72, 73, somewhere in that range. Which one of these teams has the more bountiful players in that range? So on the high end here, we'll start at 74, I suppose. Uh, they got Jermaine Pratt, middle linebacker. He'd be pretty cool. Vernon Hargraves at corner. Sure. Samaj P. Ryan. I remember, remember, the, remember the game he set like the rushing record at Oklahoma? That was pretty cool. They got Shelvin at D-Tackle, Drew Sample. Uh, Joe Sao, he's injured. He actually would be a dope player to bring in. Just flip him to a defensive end. Um, Kareem, Cam Sample, Saul, Chris Evans. We got Jackson Carmen on the offensive line. Uh, Isaiah Wilson, first round buck, could come in. Another redemption story on the offensive line. Uh, that'd have to be a big time upgrade though because our starting tackle is like a 55. Um, I mean, okay, they got some guys for sure. Nothing nothing that makes me scream like, oh, there's the guy. There's the guy we identified. Let's take a look at Tennessee here. We'll start at 75, 74, work our way down. Um, hmm. Let's see here. Dane Crunkshake, great athlete at safety. David Long, a linebacker. He's not too, too bad. Dontrell Hillard's actually kind of killed it a little bit this year as a reserve running back for the Titans when Derrick Henry went down. Him and Devontae For uh, Deontay Foreman. Have done the damn thing. They got Reduns at guard. He'd be he'd be decent. The rookie to North Dakota State also could play tackle. Westbrook, Ekeens also made a couple plays for them this season. Uh, Breland speaks former. Was he? Wasn't he a first round pick? Second round pick for the Chiefs. 
Monty Rice at linebacker. That's another guy who would be pretty interesting. He's injured right now, which kind of sucks. They got Foreman there, McNichols, Racy McMath, 6'3", with 92 speed. Okay. It's kind of a pink slip style. But then all the question goes in, like, what, what player are we fearful of more in terms of trying to go into this game, trying to find a win in this game? Do they not have Derrick Henry? Because, like, I mean, our team right now is kind of rocked with injuries. Is it, if this is a Derrick Henry list, it is. That needs to be considered. Because, like, you think it's like, all right, you play the Titans to Titans. You're going in with the understanding, like, can we stop Derrick Henry? Or you go against the Bengals, and it's like, can we stop their passing attack? Can we stop Joe Mixon, Boyd, Burrow, Higgins, and Jamar Chase? And I'm thinking out of these two games, fellas, that Titans game, where they're down Derrick Henry, that's probably the more winnable game, and it's at home. So I think that work's kind of been done for us here. We are going to sim this Week 4 game against the Bengals and hop in on the sticks at Week 5 game against Tennessee, and hopefully we can add ourselves a player or two. Let's set our game plan here for the Cincinnati Bengals. You want to take away the deep ball. We cannot let Jamar Chase get like 260-some yards like he did in real life last week. Shout out. I feel bad. I don't know how to say I feel good for anyone that has him. I feel bad for anyone that went against Jamar Chase and or Joe Burrow in the fantasy playoffs. I say that as someone that benched Joe Burrow in the finals. Still won. Still won. Flex. But, uh... Yeah, uh, let's run inside. I think any game that we're not playing, we need to kind of prioritize Chuba Hubbard. So that's what we'll rock and roll with all our players there ready to train. Hopefully they go up a couple overall points to protect us from what is most likely about to be a sim loss. Uh, Jay Reed got an injury there, broken finger. I think he's on the practice squad. I think that's Joe Reed on the practice squad. Defensively. Uh, Joe Giles, another practice squad player got hurt, so it looks pretty decent. Got to have our full starters and see if we can shock the world. Any upgrades? Any meaningful upgrades? There's a couple there. The Keel Harry and the quarterback are the biggest ones. So, Nikhil Harry, let's just keep pumping it in here to physical. Makes sense at this point in time. Unless it's like within one or two points and they're like under 25, I'm pro it's pink slips. Pump it into the overall, pump it into the thing. Like at this point, I can't be like here for Brett Jones, right? Uh, he's injured right now, not a starting center. It's only one point difference, but he's 30. So you got to just get what could potentially yield a better upgrade in pink subs. Go for the overall. We can't be trying to make him scheme fits and not have that overall move up one single spot for all these guys. Uh, Streveler, we'll show this one in his last one here. Streveler, a big time playmaker. He's going to be the interesting guy. I, now that's annoying that you get the upgrading just instantly as confidence shits the bed. But... He, he might be developmental. He's 26. That is an old player for only being one year in the league. 26. But you got to remember we had that five-star spin in the wheel. We got that 93 throw power courtesy of Deshaun Watson. But without the speed, like, there's some, I think there's going to be something there with Streveler. He's going to be an interesting guy that I think it'll be it, – not going like to say it's going to be tough to upgrade from, but there's going to be other avenues to upgrade our quarterback spot and keep him along for the ride because there are injuries. Uh, he could be like at you know long term like a really fun backup quarterback that could you know break glass in case of emergency and save our ass here. But we'll upgrade these final two players and get into the sim against the Bengals. All right, on the road. Let's be honest. I don't think Cincinnati has a massive home field advantage or anything crazy like that. So it's you know it's not like we're going into Lambeau or Soldier Field or Heinz Field or anything like you know we can we can endure. Oh, we got touchdowns. That's like our, I think our first sim touchdown of the year. We're going again. Come on. Oh, you got to get the touchdown there. If our team makes it to the red zone in the sim, if it's not seven, that is an absolute failure. We kept it close. We're keeping it pretty damn close here. We have to settle for another field goal. Down two. Going into the fourth. We kept it close. Oh, we got the touchdown. Oh, my God. Big end of game drive. 327. We're right in the red zone. Third down. Have to settle for the field goal. One point. Victor. Oh, no. This is not good. 223. We're up by one. They're probably going to go right down the field. Big third down. I really want to pull. We got to win. We <laughs> just won, baby. What? Let's go. Let's go. I don't think we're going to have anything for upgrades, but a win's a win. It's not a. I'll take it. Two to, I'm gonna. I'll calculate the pinks ratings. We'll show that. We'll break down everything. But we gotta. We just got a sim victory over like in real life the hottest team in the AFC. Ready, pink slips. Time to calculate. We won the game. 
somehow, shockingly, by one point. So that is worth one star. Looking at the turnover battle, we beat them. Three turnovers to two. Wasn't pretty on either side, but that's still worth a half star for the Grizzlies. When we go into the player stats, this is where it gets a little frustrating. Uh, so you look at Streveler, nine yards shy of getting a half star for 300 yards passing. We unfortunately got no points. No pinks points by our quarterback. For our running back, Jube Hubbard, six, seven yards rushing. There's just nothing there. Look at our receivers. Eight yards shy for Kelvin Benjamin, who's absolutely crushing this year from getting pink scoring. He finished 792 and one, six and 72 for Claypool, 575 and one for Nikhil Harry, but just no pink slip scoring there, unfortunately. A couple close. Would have been nice. Would have been nice. And then you flip to the defense. Huge game from Cam Wake, 11 tackle. Ageless wonder with the TFLs. We got nothing there from the sacks. Anya Mata and Alex Singleton, both with sacks. That's no scoring. We did have two interceptions. Javon Holland and Nate Holly. Each pick is worth a half star. So that's one full star for our two interceptions. It gives us a two and a half star performance. I think because our team sucks so much, we should be like, you know, having that wiggle room to round up to a three star performance. But, you know, we're, we're not, we're just because we finally win, we're not going to be cheesing. It's two and a half. We always round down. So that's, it's not going to be any different. It's a two star performance. We get a plus four upgrade incoming for the Vancouver Grizzlies. Before we do any upgrades, I, I want to just get through the weekly strategy here so that uh, we might have a couple extra overall points that we can boost. And I was having a little bit of a brain fart. We did have upgrades, one point upgrades from that victory immediately post game for Singleton and Claypool. In case you see that and be like, whoa, C4, what's going on? I didn't see these guys have those ratings. I forgot. It's a little bit of a brain fart. Let's see. For this Titans game, again, there's no Derrick Henry, so we got to stop the pass to uh, AJ Brown defensively let's be wary of justin simmons he's an absolute game wrecker but i'm just here hoping that we got some form of upgrades that can help us in our pursuit to steal someone really good from the cincinnati Bengals. so we have tavon campbell going up one spot i will say it's always gonna be pretty tough to give the actual canadians not the guys that are tied to this team because they played the cfl but the guys that are actually canadian like tavon campbell it's always gonna be tough to give up on those players. Not really necessarily give up, but give them away and pick up. Same with Ben Shane's use. Another pure blooded can. I mean, that's, that also sounds like I'm like super separatist or something like that. Like I'm making it all about, like, if you're not Canadian, get off the team. Like I'm going to get some sort of lawsuit or anything like that. But we got a couple upgrades there. And before we hop into this game against the one and three Titans, they are struggling without Derrick Henry. It's a divisional game, so that extra star is on the line. We get to figure out what our upgrade is going to be from the Cincinnati Bengals. In terms of upgrades, oddly enough, there's only two upgrades that really could be had that made sense for us. One that I decided not to go with was using a two-point upgrade to go from David Anyamata, 28 star dev pass rusher, to get Hendrickson, who's an 82 normal dev pass rusher. So you get the two overall, two years younger, but no dev trait feel like obviously that would be an upgrade Hendrickson is a beast for the Bengals but I thought of uh, there's there's a better one and it's going to be like the situation that went on to acquire Justin Reed where we have an injured player that as soon as they are active they're going to immediately get traded to the Houston Texans um, for the lowest rated player and it's here defense event where we have a 73 player. It's not showing up because I can't trade him. Justin Zimmer, who actually is Canadian, which is annoying. He's a 73 defensive end. I guess just for the sake of this trade, so the optics don't look as bad. He's one point higher than Neville Gallimore. We're going to use a three-point upgrade. That doesn't make sense. Literally, hey, everybody in this trade is not actually going. But we have a Zimmer, who's 73. He will be going to the Bengals for Sam Hubbard, who is 76, star to have 26. And for our team, he's most... I think we're going to have to stand him up. He's probably going to take Sean Oakman's spot uh, for the time being. Maybe long term. I mean, I'm assuming we're only going to get one year out of Cam Wake. So depending on how our upgrades go, we you know, for next season, it could be Sean Oakman back starting a defensive end. Because you got to remember, Andy, what? He had six TFLs in one game. I don't really want to lose that. But it doesn't make Sam, sense for really Sam Hubbard to be a down lineman in a 3-4. So we're going to get him, bring him in. We're going to send Brian over for the time being as a placeholder. And then when he's back, we'll, we'll acquire him back, his services back, uh, and, and send over Zimmer there. But Sam Hubbard is the player we have acquired. And, uh, well, you know, I feel a little bad. I was kind of hoping there was going to be a way that we could use the full plus four instead of just settling 
for the plus three. But for the time being, you know, sometimes it's just that's just the luck of the draw. You can't get it. And when everything's healthy, Zimmer right there will be going to the Cincinnati Bengals. Sam, I'm here. not a scheme fit, speed rusher. We're looking for a power rusher. Uh, but it's just that's nice to have. This guy with upside, 26, still has his best football ahead of him. And I think there's a legitimate claim to be made that maybe he should be a team captain. I don't really know whose spot we got. I don't know whose spot he's taking. He's not taking Holland. He's not taking Reed. Um, I don't think he's good enough yet. To, I mean, it could be Neville Galley more. We don't want to. We're not at risk of losing anybody yet. So like, it's, it's one of those things. Maybe once we hit that threshold that we can start losing players. We do our best to protect Sam Hubbard, but. but for right now, we are going to get out of the meddling of the Cincinnati Bengals locker room. And we're going to go back to the Grizzlies and get ready to take on, on the sticks, the 1-3 and three Tennessee Titans. Went 0-2 in the last episode. Have a chance to completely turn that around as the team that is first place in the AFC South and try to knock off the 1-3 and three Titans. Oh, he just stands right. He just, there we go. There we go, Sam Hubbard. First game as a Grizzly gets the big time sack. Clueless play there from Ryan Tannehill. Third and an absolute mile. Let's go. We got Gallimore standing up here. Come on, he's a grown man named Neville. Oh, there's a rough in the passer, and I hate my life. I don't know if that's automatic first down, but I'm pretty sure I hate my life. Oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. Come on, run. I also adjusted the crowd noise. I wasn't... It's, I'm recording on different software than what I re originally was, and I felt like in the last episode, the crowd noise... A little overpowering. So I, I nerfed it a little bit here. So now we can hear ourselves. Third and ten. And we got the Canadian Josh Palmer. Breaking free. Big time reception. Gain of 17 yards. Go oh, Chuba. Oh, Chuba Hubbard. The Hubbards are dominating. Go Chuba and untouched. First touchdown of the game. Goes to the Vancouver Grizzlies. God, those uniforms are fire. God, that's how you start. You ain't running us. You're not. Derrick Henry. Third three chance to get off the field here. Going to be our newcomer, Hubbard. It's actually a decent throw there from Dan Hill. Maybe a late hit as well from the Grizzly defender. There you go. This guy's a beast. What a what a win that was against the Bengals to get this monster on our team. One, two tackles. One of those is a TFL. One of those is a sack. Setting ourselves up third and nine. Good luck. Too much teal. Too much teal for you to deal with. Shit. Or just pick on like our 55 linebacker. Really? Just slants to your best guy? Cheesy, Tennessee. Cheesy, Mike Vrabel. Ah, I can slant with the best of them. You slant me, I slant you. You slant me, I slant you right back. Josh Palmer, 75 yards. Did not expect it to be that easy. Justin Reed coming on the blitz. Gets home. Full sack. Let those user sack as well. On Tannehill. We got third and a mile, man. This, this team's vibing off that Bengals victory. You get a sim victory. You get a victory on your own. It inspires confidence. It inspires everyone to play like plus 10 to their ratings. Congrats. You got more yards to punt it. Ah, man, look at the blocking. No one's within 15 yards till he gets touched. All right, two straight runs. Did not work for this offense. We're going back to the pass. Strebler is feeling it today. Let's go. Let's go. Who wants it? 
Oh, shit. It's not what you wanted to see right there. Oh, that's just... Uh, you can't miss that tackle. I think I more so switched off the guy than hit tackle, but come on, help me out. He's actually supposed to watch the tight end. Ah, he also, he's just not really that great of an athlete. Herxer, wide open. Getting a little bit of a shootout on our hands here. Oh, yeah, nice little flick of the wrist. Kelvin Benjamin, who's off a 91-yard performance against the Bengals. Trying to repeat that here today. Let's go Kelvin at the sticks. He's unstoppable. You can't cover him. This is the redemption this series needed. Double slants. That's what the coach wants. That's what I'm going to watch 19. 19 loves the slants. He's trying to be... Uh, Oh my god, just easy. This is, I swear to god, this is all Madden. Easiest. Yeah, let's go. 34 wide open. Can't miss it. And David Automania says, eh, You're not running on me today. Again, you're not Derek Henry. Maybe you can run to the right hand side of the line. You go to left, it's going to be a lot of this. And we'll just take... We got the last second Hail Mary there. Oh, Julio got it. I guess that. We'll just take the pick. That helps for Pink Slip scoring. Oh, there's first time they've gone to Julio. That's a big time catch. Singleton eats that one up. TFL, I think Singleton's going to finish this year with like 30 tackles for loss. Third and five. They keep, man, they are audibling a lot this drive. I don't know why. It seems to be working until then. PBU trying to... Look at the glutes. Look at the glutes on the man. Hold to a field goal attempt. They are able to nail it. But that's still a win for the defense to get off the field without giving up a tutty. Yikes! Gotta work on the deep ball. I think we had Hubbard there again. Just proving that, you know, this game with that deep ball, the first big pass, he can do it all out of the backfield. Learned a little bit from McCaffrey. And there's a nice pass breakup by the linebacker. I think it was long. Three and out. Oh, there's a gong for you. There's a gong for you. One on the one. One puts it on the one. He's one of one. I want a safety. Papa wants safety. Or not. I was kind of hoping that he'd be able to like sidestep out of that one and get a touchdown. That'd be amazing. Coach wants slants. Let's go. Coach wants slants. I want slants. He won the Super Bowl. I enjoyed watching him win the Super Bowl. And we had Y. We had Y until Simmons went, oh yeah, I'm uh, way better than anyone on your O-line. Third and a mile coming up. Third and 16. We got Kelvin Benjamin. It's been our most consistent receiver this season. Let's see if we can get him the ball here. Or we just say, screw it, go deep to Claypool. And he doesn't even jump. He doesn't even jump. He had the first down, did a stupid, unnecessary spin move. And what are they going to go for? It? Field goal? They are going to go for it. I think that's a good call. Mike Vrabel is an aggressive coach. We're going to go on Yamada. Got to try to knock 76, 77 on his ass. And there we go, baby. On Yamada, TFL, turnover on downs. That's how you respond from a bad pick. All right, third and nine. I'm going to go to, like, I, I'm shocked that Kelvin Benjamin is my go-to guy over Claypool here. We'll try Claypool. 
He actually jumps for that one, but it is short of the sticks. Fourth and four will do what the coach wants. I'm going to guess field goal. It is Harula comes out. Fourth and four. Kick looks pretty decent. And it splits the uprights. We got that seven-point cushion. We're good. Even if we give up a touchdown, we ain't losing. Oh, he, how is he? We brought the blitz, but I didn't bring, like, zero blitz. Bench. Third and six. I'm looking at A. Tell you right now, should be looking at X. I'm looking at A. Because you always go to A, he's reliable. Don't don't put that in. That's People got to think that's racist. First and ten. Control a little bit of the... Come on. Miss and give us great starting field position. No blocks. I'm not blocking. I'm not going for the block. Stay away. He shanks it wide left. Let's go win it. Come on, Duck. How about we run some slants, buddy? Of course not. What are they running? Prevent? Look at that. Let's scramble here. This one, they probably should get... Oh, we got to get one more yard for Pink's scoring. Come on. We need this. Because I, I don't think it's going to be a five. But the fact that we get that extra start because the divisional, it, it could be a juicy scoring. We'll take any and all. And there we go. If we can make our kick, there's a half a star for Tuba Hubbard going over 100 yards. Third and four. <sighs> Forgot the house rules, man. Coach wants to kick it. They don't have timeouts to ice us, which is pretty good, right? Should just be able to make this kick right down the middle, go 2-0 in the episode, and steal away a player from the Tennessee Titans. So let's make this kick no pressure. Stop. That looks perfect. And the Vancouver Grizzlies remain first place somehow in the AFC South. And we have another chance to win a player that you guys are going to be able to vote on in the comments section just by dusting the Titans here. In a matchup where, you know, ebbs and flows of the game. First half, we were dominant. Defense, offense, running slants. It was a thing of beauty. Second half was pretty much all Titans until the end there. Had that fumble on Chuba Hubbard, which was very annoying. But our team was able to persevere. Mentally strong. That's what happens when you hire someone like Doug Peterson. And we got the dub. So I'm going to go calculate the star rating. I'll be right back and I'll tell you what kind of upgrade is in store. Yeah! Taking a gander at the pink slip scoring. We won, and it was a divisional victory. So that is two stars right off the rip. For our player stats, a uh, solid game from Streveler, but unfortunately no scoring for him. But Chubbert went over 100 yards rushing, so that is a half star. On the receiving standpoint, even though Calvin Benjamin just continues to be insane, Josh Palmer with 126 yards, two touchdowns. Both of those were slants. Hopefully Doug remembers that. But with over 100 yards and two tutties, one full star for Josh Palmer and finishing up on the defensive side of the ball. A uh, big game there from Singleton. Unfortunately, no pink scoring. But we did have the interception at the end of the first half to Vaughn Campbell, which goes for a half star, and it ends up being a four-star performance, which is a plus eight upgrade. As always, fellas, for this upgrade, I am going to be going with the top comments. You want to get a little bit of clout, I'll clip the comment, put it in the next video, uh, as to your reasoning for spending our upgrade. We got... Six different upgrades. These are first three. I'll show you the other trade window in just one second. We are working with a plus eight upgrade. So the first upgrade kind of want to talk about here is a Kevin Byard. We have the opportunity to flip Justin Reed for Kevin Byard. It is plus eight to go out and get him, but it's a 91 free safety. He's 28, so that means from an age standpoint, sure. You know, maybe his best football, you know, might be close to that peak. He might not get much higher than a 91 overall. But he's an absolute ball hawk, one of the best ball hawk safeties. It would instantly become our, our best player, and it wouldn't even be close. Um, 90 zone coverage, it's insane. Uh, 86 plus, no, it's really 88 pursuit, 79 hit power, 78 uh, catching, usually when he's on point, feeling good. 80 catching, 
He can force a lot of turnovers. The only thing that kind of is the downside of that is like Reed's already like well and above our best safety. So like how much better are we just getting at one spot? But it, it's, it's not great to talk about. So plus eight, plus Justin Reed to get Kevin Byard. We could send them Chase Claypool. Again, I've kind of stated that I, I don't really want to get rid of Canadians, but this is an upgrade that, again, I am going 100%. This is what you guys want to see. You guys vote on it. We have Claypool, 79, and we could spend plus seven to get A.J. Brown. Kind of similar style of, you know, even though the, the, the frame is a little bit different, uh, both powerful runners with the football. So uh, there's another option there, plus seven to flip Claypool into A.J. Brown. We have an option on the offensive line to flip Max Sharping to get Nate Davis, 77, star dev guard, only 24. So the age is right. It is plus eight to get Nate Davis. And to move on from Max Sharpen. Those are our first three options. Our options, I, I mean, maybe because we're not spending a plus uh, eight maxing out here on all these players. I could find maybe a plus one somewhere. I don't think there was. But, I mean, I might be able to sift through the bottom of the roster. Uh, but I, we don't really need to talk about that. We're talking about the big time acquisition. This one here is also involving a Canadian, Tavon Campbell. Had the interception in that game. 28-69, normal. You know, so there's certain times you got to make concessions that like i want to keep the canadians here but what is his ceiling and what are our potential upgrades so we can look at plus eight across the board either way to two young corners here we have fulton who again this is maybe just for someone's a diehard fulton fan that can vote for him i think the obvious option it's still worth mentioning is uh caleb farley caleb farley plus eight uh hidden dev 77 he's a rookie he has everything we want for pinks up six foot two 95 speed, 95 acceleration, 93 agility, 91 jumping, 71 like baller, absolute baller, and a franchise type corner guy that we can have plug and play, get going, and then once we get Ben Saint Juice healthy, our secondary is gonna you know kind of take the game to the next level. And the last upgrade I want to talk about, we have Egwoven, the 68 converted outside linebacker, the middle linebacker. He's 28, spent some time in the CFL. We can look at bringing in Zach Cunningham to come in play alongside Alex Singleton. That is a plus five upgrade to get Cunningham here, who's 26, with a star dev. So as always, fellas, all these options I just talked about with what they would cost is going to be pinned at the top of the comment section so you guys can vote and figure out, are we getting A.J. Brown, Nate Davis, Zach Cunningham, Caleb Farley, Christian Fulton, or Kevin Byard? I'm not really leaning any, any way. I would say, gun to my head, I think maximizing the full plus eight and getting Caleb Farley would be, would be my prediction. Or if you want to be realistic and, and try to build the trenches, the plus eight to go from Sharping to Nate Davis. I, I would say on either side of the ball, that would be my vote. And I wouldn't hate Kevin Byard for Justin Reed if you want to just straight up get the best player right away. But it's going to be entirely up to you guys. So vote away in the comment section below. And that is how we're going to end this episode, fellas. Thank you very much for tuning in to a new episode of Madden 22 Pink Slips. I hope you're enjoying it. Would love to hit the like goal. And yeah, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. That'll do for here. Thank you for watching. Peace out.